Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO, <clears throat> the mod that I probably obsess over a bit too much. I'm your host, Mr. M Lover, but uh, we've got to talk about the CPM-12M carrier set, with each telephone line having an individual number. It would seem someone would have, directly, have to directly dial that number to connect with the line they want, however. Practical realities have made that impossible due to the sheer amount of memory and power that need to be allocated to such a task instead. An army of switchboard operators are employed to connect calls manually, but with the dawn of the transistor computing, that could become a thing of the past. Fujitsu Limited hopes to be the first to capitalize on the application of transistors to telecommunications with their new telephone transmission systems, the CPM-12M, which uses transistors to handle the calculations necessary for automatic dialing, allowing it to be put in place on a large scale. The next stage of the telecommunications revolution has arrived. How beautiful. 90% 90% average interest and quality, which is okay. It's a pretty good growth of money, and we uh, market it towards the German Reich, so it does reduce our uh, approval from Japan, but... Oh well, but we do have a cup of peach tea here, as you can see, I just reloaded this game save uh, from where we left last time, so a little more poverty, but you know, what it is, it is what it is, as we're doing the churn. Synergy through cybernetics. Sitting across from the table from Ludwig Erhard, the Reich's notably reformist minister of economics, Ubuka couldn't help but see a kindred soul. There was a bespeckled and unassuming man who nonetheless reached for the stars. The conservatives in the Reich had vigorously opposed the liberal social market policies Erhard had implemented, but the minister had persevered and was now presiding over an unprecedented economic miracle. Perhaps these reforms would one day birth challenges of Fujitsu's commercial empire, but for now, Ibuka wishes to speak with Mr. Uh, Minister Ehad as a partner. Ehad's words came slowly but carefully, and the translator made sure to convey every nuance. The fear I made made the computerization of German society a top priority, while Siemens and the universities had their own initiatives the Reich. Still faced a shortfall of high-end competing systems in the short term and needed a stopgap solution. This was where Fujitsu uh, could come into the equation. Eha desperately needed a way to identify failures in the economy <clears throat> and set economic policy without legions of bureaucrats and the unprecedented capabilities of Fujitsu mainframes and memory and processing speed could provide a solution. Ibuka considered the offer carefully. What Ehad wanted was a custom-built system that combined multiple mainframe units into one whole, capable of finding order in the chaos of the market. Such a tool in the hands of the Reich could prove dangerous if relations between the two superpowers once again froze over, but the engineering challenge represented was too tempting to pass up. Besides, it would be a fantastic business opportunity. If the planners in Tokyo were too afraid of Germany arming itself with silicon swords, they should have resorted or restored trade relations in the first place. Hey, Ehad, we have a deal. Talent search. Oh, let's see, did I do something last time? I don't know. Our initiatives have begun to show their first results, but we cannot pass over our own overlooked minds within Fujitsu. A thorough search for talent and expertise within the company will be conducted to find anyone who may have been missed in a race to the top. These prospective minds will join the growing ranks of our engineering department soon. Fujitsu's engineers will be known for worldwide, known worldwide for the talent and skill, for whom no problem is too difficult. After all, we are Guangdong's best. The churn, of course. Um, if you want to read this again, please go ahead, but... Lab rats and a roundabout. So it's called a roundabout, Yoshida said. Hey, watched. Uh, from a raised balcony, as a Fujitsu man in the conference room uh, got, below got up, rotated around the table one, by one seat, and sat back down again. So each man said, hey, moves into the next ma station and takes up his work for half an hour? Exactly. It's intended to gauge the effectiveness of each man and his ability to adapt. Hey, scratch his chin, I don't, but I don't understand something. He pointed out the three stations on the one side of the table. You've got transistor design leading into processor design leading into advanced circuitry. So, said y y Yoshida. So, hey, said, uh, they are all part of the same theory. Electrical engineering. Why not bury the stations they have transistor design lead into materials integration? Then we can catch them in off guard and get a better sense of their adaptability. You should eye the young man for a long time. Hmm, interesting, he said, greeting. Uh, oh, boy. Pride bloomed in Hay's heart. He impressed Yoshida. Yoshida was a powerful man of Fujitsu and could make things happen for Hay, but as Hay looked again at the conference table, he noticed that many of those participating in the experiment were lowering Chinese engineers who didn't have the same experience as their Zuzhin counterparts. They've been thrown out of the deep end here and used his lab rats and benchmarks to be checked against the Zuzhin men. He felt a pain. He wanted to excel, but also would want to see his fellow Chinese humiliated by Fujitsu. There must be something better for them. So we're going we're gonna to lose Zuzhin's support. Oh, maybe we should have done that one instead. The churn. Well, oh well. Ordinance Labor Act. <clears throat> While Suzuki administration had seen fit press uh, for inefficient and destructive labor legislation in the uh, lead up to the Yasuda crash, Ibuka has brought a much more rational mind to the chief executive's office. And with Guangdong's uh, workforce def deficits finally being addressed, Ibuka now seen fit to propose legislation to correct Suzuki's mistakes. The proposed Guangdong organized labor ordinance will learn from the revised labor standards ordinance's folly and streamline labor laws to acceptable standards. A definitive improvement over existing laws of passage of the ordinance would do much to improve the efficiency and productivity for our workers. Of course, such legislation will not go over well with the lower classes who view our legislation as an attempt to limit their privileges and rights. Ah, bridled capitalism. 
Alright, what do we got here? So we're gonna continue working on this, but there's nothing we can do about that for now. And we're gonna close out of this one because we can. Corruption is low high, but we're gonna maybe do this one next. Reduce corruption by 7.5%, which is what we can do immediately. Group more Zushin support. At the very least, we want more Zushin support. Um, I think that's a good goal to get. We can't always get Chinese support, but Zushin support, that's something we can always work on. Modern research facilities, that's not bad. A deficient administration, huh? But we do have a cup of peach tea here to keep us nice and toasty and warm and ready through the turbulent times. But the interview, the Fujitsu interviewer had eyes like a bird's of prey, sharp and unblinking. The man didn't smile at hair and frown, his face was an unreadable mask. Hey oh. sat down in the chair opposite of the interviewer and clasped his sweaty palms together. He tried to keep his legs from shaking, of course. Ooh, a coup in Manchuria. Sucks for them. Your self-taught engineer, the interviewer said, spent the past year or two running from firm to firm, trading ideas, keeping up with bleeding edge research. Very ambitious for a young man. Hey, I half expected him to say, for Chinese. I think the question Fujitsu is most interested in hearing the answer to is, why? Where does this ambition come from? Hey, never been one to answer these interviews, been one of these interviews before. What was he supposed to say? Should he flatter Fujitsu? Should he tell a lie? Tell the truth? After a moment's consideration, he decided on the truth. I want to excel, he said. I want to be part of a new society. The future is being born of Fujitsu's R&D development, and I want to be part of that. What Hayden mentioned was that he had a newfound fear. A fear of being left in the dust, of being Chinese in a future that he didn't have a hand in building. But in the end, it did not matter. The interviewer gave a small nod of approval. It was only after the interview that Hay realized that his race had never been once part of the conversation. Welcome to Fujitsu. If you can do your job, that's all we really care about. Probably. Probably. Guns and butter. <clears throat> Saijima Uruzo. Ibuka supposed he was in the worst of all possible worlds. Whatever the element of competition that separated them, Ibuka could always appreciate a fellow traveler on the road to efficiency. How a man like that had managed to progress through the stumbling, bloated mass of the IJA was beyond him. Uh, but ultimately, that question was irrelevant. What mattered was now that Saijima was here, and Manchuko was on the cusp of momentous changes. Changes that boded not well at all for Guangdong, of course. Having swept aside the Guangdong militaries, the Manchurian court, and the Sumocho in the path of power. Saijima promised to be a worthy competitor. He knew a good thing when he saw it. He had even found a good few words to say about Ibuka's own development programs, though not without adding with a condescending half-smile. The mods of Manchukuo could replicate anything they drew up in Guangdong, quite apart from the injury to Ibuka's pride. Something about the way Saijima had said that had sent shivers up his spine. He had been able to stop thinking about that moment, the whole flight back from Xinqing to Guangdong, and Saijima's false smile etching itself into his brain. A staffer came over and quietly informed him that they would be landing in Guangdong within half an hour. Ibuka nodded and turned back to his work. For all the dangers Saijima represented, Guangdong still had a lead. A lead did not tend to slip. There's still much to be done. We got access to desperate economic decisions. Oh boy. Now we can open this one once again. Uh, at losing a lot of stuff just for growth? I mean, we could, but I'm not going to. I don't see the point of it. Not bad, a billion. Tw almost 20%. Very nice. Inflation's a little high, but yeah, it's not that bad. The big day. Hey, just thought about m managed to resist. Uh, keeping his job from dropping as he passed through the Fujitsu laboratories. He'd seen the engineering labs before. Heck, he'd seen Fujitsu engineering labs before, but nothing on the scale. Men in white coats hurried up and down, making minute adjustments to machines of outstanding complexity and transforming the plant's rare substances into the putty of the future. And Hay would be here to help mold it, just as long as he proved up to the task. <clears throat> Machines. He was certain he could handle, but Hay was far more apprehensive about his fellow interns. Mostly of Japanese extraction, and several all years older than him. They met him with a range of responses, all extremely polite, and apparently already knew of him by reputation, but something lingered behind the words. Hay's Japanese was good enough to deal with the basic communication and technical concepts, but he felt he was perhaps failing to grasp certain nuanced inflections. Discomfort? Condescension? Jealousy? A mix of all three? Well, it didn't really matter to Hay. There may be daggers in men's smiles, but what could they do? Any time spent ostracizing him would be less time... Uh, spent keeping up with them. A luxury doubted they could afford. He would do well here. He had to, but grow our own brains. It's not enough to hire the engineers today. We must cultivate the geniuses of tomorrow. We'll spare no expense to those found worthy. The beacon of innovation shines ever brighter across the globe, salvaged from collapse by Ibuka's visionary embrace and renovated by Fujitsu's unmatched intellect. Yet at its foundation, glaring fissures remain, illiteracy, education shortages, two fatal ills in the system that have evaded our attention for too long, heinously band-aided by rapid outsourcing. How is one to redirect his path towards his destiny when his own vehicle refuses to obey its master? How is Guangdong? To remodel itself as the brain of the world of its very neurons, prized intellectuals and their creations remain in the clutches of dim-witted outsiders. Intellectual autarky, above all else, shall be the key to unshackle our march of progress, and through decisive initiatives we shall give rise to a fresh stream of new scholars and researchers cultivated by Guangdong and for Guangdong. Ooh. I tuned Overture. Mori to a chaos sat in his office in Sony's Hong Kong's headquarters, making a flurry of phone calls about Ibuka Monster's newest ordinance. Mori was busy arranging lobbying of his own and other such measures to combat the organized uh, labor 
Ordinance? Well, Sony's primary objective in the endeavor was to kill the ordinance before it could pass. Various contingencies were in the process of being drawn up for the unfortunate reality where such efforts were unsuccessful. However, Morito. <clears throat> His busy schedule of urgent phone calls was interrupted when his secretary informed him that a representative of Fujitsu was waiting to see him. With caution in his voice, Morita informed him that his secretary let him in. <laughs> the man who entered Morita's office was perhaps the plainest man he'd ever seen, of course. He looked like he was a tailor made to be as presentable and inoffensive as possible. In an incredibly monotone voice, the representative informed Morita that a company such as Sony should have no need for concern over the organized labor ordinance when it passed. Chief Executive Ibuka Masaru uh, was willing to grant Sony operational autonomy in exchange for support, although he added that the decision ultimately rested on Morita's shoulders. As the representatives blabbered on and on, Morita swore he could see Ibuka's smug face and curled up lips beyond the representatives and accepting the offer would only read, uh, feed right into them. Morita wanted nothing more than to deny his offer of only a slight Ibuka, yet he knew an olive branch when he saw one and denying it could prove otherwise or unwise. So with this one, uh, increased quality, highly decreased industrial regulations, increased work day, increases Japanese expat support, but decreases Chinese support, decreases Chinese opinion, and Zhujin and Chinese dissent against the government will become more profound. Hmm. Ta targeted exemptions. Oh boy. Well, we'll see what happens here. I don't know what what ending we're trying to get to either, so we're just kind of here. Have a good time. Um, you know what? I don't want to do this one yet because we don't have that much corruption because that's 12%. I want to increase Chinese support, though. I really do. A straight bullet. Lee Kishin reclined in his office chair, of course. Uh, one hand folded on, holding on to the phone in his left ear, the other scribbling notes about the meeting with Chief Executive Ibuka Masaru. The meeting center on Ibuka's organized labor ordinance. <clears throat> was proving to be surprisingly productive. Lee had just gone over his exhaustive re reasoning in the support of measures to increase Zujin involvement in factory management. I suppose I can see the benefit in this, Ibuka began, allowing more Zujin into management the potential to increase overall employee coordination in the factories. Although I must admit that Zujin are a rather nebulous group of people which makes them quite difficult to regulate. Someday we'll have to properly define what a Zujin is and not for efficiency's sake. Some by the callous way Ibuka referred to Zujin struck a nerve for Lee. He thought back to the 50s when he struggled to keep a single factory in the business, in part due to his Chinese heritage. Part of him wanted to end the conversation right there, yet another part of him reminded him that the incremental progress is better than no progress at all. I don't think they have anything more, we have anything more to say. Good, good day, Mr. Ibuka. We see the front of the time, on the other hand. Huh. Less than restrictions of Zujin for managerial positions? Concessions. Oh, maybe we want to go back to the other one. But I don't know, we got more than enough seats. Yeah, I might go back and do the other one then. I want to be bad advisor. We're growing our own brains, too. So we'll see. The Guangdong Organized Labor Ordinance passes. A cacophony of shouts torn it from the Legislative Council and almost as far as outside streets, following the announcement of the most recent vote from the Assembly. The topic of labor rights had early caused heated debate inside the Council in the moments before the vote itself, and the resentment, which was left simmering before the ballot but was taken soon, spewed forth and forwarded the poison in the tense atmosphere which had descended over the delegates. On one side came the offended shouts from the associates of Sony and Chung Kong. For more they said, there's always yet another plain display of apathy towards the basic well-being of the workers of Guangdong in a deliberate attempt to squeeze out further profits through increasingly destructive means. Their outrage was not shared by the associates of Matsushita and Fushitu, who instead argued back in sneering voices, all the while Komai and his few representatives, Susabaya, looked over their proceedings without adding to the commotion and seemingly content with the commission which was unfolding. Meanwhile, Ibuka smiled in silent satisfaction. The shouts and protests of the council were beneath them, all while he focused was on the feeling of having successfully removed another roadblock to an efficient future. Progress will not be stopped. So we have that from the same earlier. We decreased Chinese support, which sucks. Um, but we did do the organized labor ordinance with the concessions of Zhujin. We lose a seat to Chung Kong, and we get more Zhujin support, though. So, Zhujin dissent against the government will be less profound. But now we're going to de destroy all of our support. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm, we could do that at the top. Low expectations on the street. Make sure the people below us follow us. Minor police ordinance. Uh, maybe we'll do this one next. Domestic security has suffered in tremendously under the past period of this government. It seems like no one before Ipoko was willing or more likely capable of reorganizing and reinvigorating, reinvigorating and reinvigorating Guangdong's depleted police force. Security services have to be developed on a fundamental level, bringing them in line with reality so that it is better prepared to strike at the rising criminal activity. Two executives' ideals will be put into practice and safety will be proposed back on the streets. So, get more police. Uh huh. Nice. Exciting amendment. So, we shall see all. 
Organization of Labor. The passage of the Book of Master's Organized Labor Ordinance purported to improve economics, organization, and efficiency on labor and production. What was meant in practice was a significant harshing of life for the average Guangdong laborer. Oversight increased, and managers and bosses demanded more and more from the laborers for less and less rewards. And if issued to a line of factors somewhere in Hong Kong, a Zuji informant observed that legally allowed breaks were being shrunk little by little in the name of increasing efficiency. While when he asked of his boss, a jab and his comeback known for being ruthless on a good day about the matter is chewed out for insolence of being effing nosy good for nothing trying to sabotage your company. And at Tachi Factory Macau, Yasu Yasukawa Yoshiko looked down with visible concern as Jab and his managers took the opportunity given them by the recent changes to treat the workers ever more brutally, resorting to blows and increasingly cruel insults whenever their workers so much as slightly misadjusted a part of their production line. Outside of Matsushita Factory in Koshu, Lam Hao Sun heard the workers complaining about increasing numbers of managers coming in and nitpicking their work in an increasingly hardline manner. Although only minor, minor at the moment, Lam could not help but think that the griping was an Ill, Ill, Ill omen for the future. Restrictions alone do not make a more organized society, make up for lost time. Adults, on the other hand, su suffice to say, they've marched well past the crossroads of life. The gears of the mind have been locked dead in the place. Grinding on with mere inertia as the rest of the brain descends into rust year after year until finally the whole machine and crawl to a permanent halt. But there's never <clears throat> too much we can do to keep the gears turning. Guangdong's intellectual rehabilitation is already well underway, and our own very men at Fujitsu is the charge. The Romanitary Roman employed institutions, where even the plaintiffs of laborers will find themselves rearmed and revitalized with a mathematical and scientific discipline. It isn't just about corporate dominance, it's about keeping our nation's destiny firmly within our palm. Slow to increase police presence here too. Because we're dominant now, which is nice. And we're actually at 50%, but I really don't want to hurt us here too much. Get more uh, assimilation, so we have to deal with less, less of those people. That'd be great, but still. I don't want to do this increase... Chinese support when basically one state by 3%. That's not very much. Barriers to success. The men who stood in front of Ibuka had been squawking for quite some time, and it was beginning to get quite irritating. Subordinates, head of some associated firm or another, some had come quite so far to get his Koshu office. They had presented themselves well and made well prepared speeches, bowed obsequiously. Why? And to say that they were going too fast to show concern for friction and burnout, all with due respect for his vision, they made sure to say. Enough, said Ibuka as one man. Tanaka I was winding down his sobs for about some idiot cousin. I trust her trip to Koshu wasn't too difficult, Tanaka. No, 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 not at all, sir, Tanaka eyed Ibuka hopefully. Good, I would hate that. When you were clearly struggling enough already to bear any excessive effort coming here, I would hate it if, instead of devoting your time, energy, and pride towards the operating Kifujitsu standards, you decided to dedicate your time towards making excuses for mediocrity. Tell me, Tanaka. Is your cousin mentally or physically retarded? What, sir? I said retarded. Ibuka sl uh, slammed his fist on the table, making everyone jo held back, unable to perform basic tasks without difficulty. Tell me, is it really a Herculean effort for him to get acceptable results from his subordinates without excess chatter, following basic company directives and demands? Can your fool of a cousin's mediocre efforts be called a triumph of the human spirit? His voice was morphing into a growl now, as every tendon, every nerve ending pushed to the limits to produce his painfully average displays, or should it be seen as what it is? Mediocrity and excuses. Now there's nothing else. Get the heck out of my office. Fujitsu remains dedicated to excellence. Uh, I just I, I just can't do it. For 3% more, 12% corruption, we should wait for a big one to, to really do that one. Um, 3% more, that's all it is. That's all it is, man. That's all it is. We're up to 23 now, which is nice, but still. Uh, can we hit these guys? Uh, we probably could, actually. Decrease Jab's expat support, Zujin, and uh, Zujin. Yakuza support, but that doesn't mean this is going to go up too much. I don't mind lowering this, but that just means it might increase this. Yeah, with the program. Can you believe this, Takasaki said? Uh, pointing to the newspaper article, this kid's not even old enough to drink, he's only got a basic education, and some old man should land himself an internship at Fujitsu. Imagine what this place would be if they could all do that. Oh, well, that's impressive, said Yoshiko. You called and you said you had a story you wanted me to work on? As a matter of fact, I do. You might have noticed a lot of stories about inspirational excellence and exceptional drive in the news lately. People starring like Wonder Boy over here, said Takashi Takasaki, pointing to the picture of Lee. A lot of new mothers read our fine magazine, Yasukawa, and we can assume that they only want the best things in life for their babies. If only they could all raise their kids to be as smart as the one they see in the news. I'm assuming someone's found a way, said, uh, asked Yoshiko. That journalistic instinct's what I pay you for. Seems like that, uh, seems that besides offering vocational training to societies less fortunate, Fujitsu are pioneering some kind of company education mm, service. Designed to make a whole bunch of little geniuses, they've offered a peek inside and I expect to be good business. A few moments, minutes later, Yoshiko's back in her office looking through ref reference material. The scheme certainly seemed ambitious, but would it work as well as Fujitsu said it would? And if it didn't, how critical would, could her articles be? For a second, she thought about inviting a lamb to go with her to see if a Zuzhin perspective might prove useful, but decided against it. Everyone she was going to see could speak Japanese in the occasional Chinese success story notwithstanding. She reckoned Fujitsu's new system would remain that way for some time. I can manage on my own, too. On the job? 
We're going to just destroy our influence, but kindergarten is too late. The case of universal education is, in fact, children. The brain of a child, as the book has discovered, possesses truly fascinating qualities, compact yet tremendously capable of information storage and retention. It's a sponge in the most literal sense, with its malleability, regrettably decaying with age. As such as the sooner our, uh, the sooner our youngsters are educated, the better. A new line of early school programs is to be implemented at Fujitsu, where the children of our employees are expected to have their first taste of the future, with the very own men as contributors to the experiment in weeks at most at the... Uh, the entirety of Guangdong will be introduced to the true state-of-the-art education, taking human potential to unprecedented heights. And by them, whatever naysayers remaining will only have blinded themselves to the one simple fact, kindergarten is just too late. Happy 1968, everybody. You know what? So we got a little bit of power. Let's do this, too. Don't want to be happy. Uh, remember this one before? I don't know. When John Man Hin arrived with his family Juka, the crowds were enormous. Now transformed into an entire hot springs resort, the little huts and lean toes of the lean toes of the old village have been replaced with towering new hotel complexes. The air was thick with semen, so warm that Chan could feel his pores popping. Everyone leaked hands so not to get lost, and Chan led his family to their hotel, opened only a few months ago by Sony. He only booked one room for the four of them, him and his teenage brother and his parents, but didn't anticipate space to be an issue. They'd all be spending the most of their days lounging in the springs anyways. He left his family with the luggage in the lobby. I went to find the reception and said, He came across an awkward scene. A cleaner had accidentally knocked a guest cup of coffee off one of the tables in the lobby and was apologizing profusely as the hotel manager screamed at her. Well, one of the Juka natives, China called, the poor woman looked like she was about to crumple under the onslaught. They'd all lost their homes to the developers once the first tourist had started coming here. It couldn't have been easy to see their entire lives turn into servants for bathers. Before he could go too far down that line of thought, Chen shut it off. It was their holiday, and he was going to use the opportunity to relax. Besides, it wasn't like he could do anything for them anyway. The room had not a speck of dust on it. Where are we at with this? 36 billion, did we get it? Yeah, maybe. Start some, uh, meeting your heroes. The real Ibuka Masaru looked nothing like the Ibuka Masaru in Fujitsu storefront Sahe. The man on the TV had always kept that smug grin hanging on his face. His jet black hair neatly combed the man before him, however, had his hair disheveled. His elbows embedded with circles of black, his expression constantly alarmed and resigned. That's kind of like me. I've heard nothing short of a sound astounding feast from you, hey. Across the table, the tea table, the chief executive sat. Leveling himself with the boy, such meteoric ascension within th mere months, such drive for knowledge, almost reminded me of my own days at Waseda University, to be frank, he smirked. I'm honored, Mr. Chief Executive. Hey, he replied curtly, trying his darkness to iron out the trembling anxiety and irritation, too. And his voice, sure, honor. For what? Leaving my family behind to rot in the sewers? Your parents and I wish nothing but the best of them. As if slicing through Hayes' slaps with his glare, he book aside. To have raised such an exemplar of brilliance into this world, they must be so terrific, terrifically proud of their son. His gaze drifted away, but imagine for a second, hey, what did mom and dad do come to have your intellect and your conviction? What about our workers tolling in our factories and our offices to those laboring to uphold the very foundations we stand upon today? With that, his gaze turned toward hey once more. Now you see what we're at, Fujitsu, have always endeavored towards, a future where everyone in our nation would strive to achieve their best, and you, dear friend, are such a future incarnate. But first, let's start with, with him, Fujitsu, shall we? There's something I'd like to help with, he booked a smile, and rose and headed to the office door, and hey, without even realizing it, rose to his feet too as if a chunk of metal drawn to a magnet. He hated Ibuka, hated his cockiness, hated what he did to Chun, to Wai, to everyone, but somehow, as he strode after the president of Fujitsu Limited into the hallway, he felt something else blossoming within him. Solace. Unlimited. Input. Better yet, the immense malleability of a child's brain before it falls into rust makes it an all too perfect vessel of innumerable data, formulas, algorithms, too precious a goldmine for have gone untapped by those excuses for educators before us. It would be an inalienable duty to pump the treasure trove of truth into our next generation of gift and, and gift them, with fully condensed class schedules, copious reading supplements, and hands on practical sessions starting with the very comforts of Fujitsu facilities. Bleeding hearts outside can whine however they want that we're frying the brains of our children, and it is truly a pity that those people are too much of a horde of Neanderthals to know better. Oh crap, that's not good. It was not a uh, consul general uh, who ex exited the consul general's office, much to Ibuka Masu's surprise, nor was a negotiator or a secretary of some fashion or even a dis diplomat at all. I said a short man in a military guard with a receding hairline and a folder loosely held in one hand now regarded the chief executive the same way in which he might regard gum that had gone stuck to the shoe. By all means, he was generally unassuming, the <clears throat> generic version of any military man, but it was that look alone which told Ibuka Masu that today was rapidly spinning off course. Good afternoon, I'm attaché Wang Jingzhu of the Chinese delegation to Guangdong. The consul general unfortunately cannot make this meeting today, so I shall take his place, as I will in his absence from here on out. It's a pleasure, General. He booked a master who rose to shake his hand, but his extended arm met with no response. Instead, he attaché glanced at the gesture, resoundingly ignoring it, and raised his folder to read from. Lieutenant General, but call me attaché. I have been instructed to forward anything noteworthy to Consul General that uh, comes from our discussion on. Now he's wanted to read the gen in his hand. Terror of harmonization. The quiet snort. Not expect anything noteworthy from the meeting in this first place. 
He broke a master rule, only to only guard his new companion with a stunned silence. No, he realized today was not going to be a productive day. At least the other man knows how to speak. <sighs> oh, darn it. Geniality, it was a Takashima today, a fact which made Ibukamasu want to kiss the floor beneath him. No military men, no officers, no hard stares from soldiers who thought themselves better than their negotiating partner, just a bureaucrat and a relatively reasonable one, too. Ibukamasu hoped his feelings didn't show through his expression. That would be rude, after all, even if he figured it was entirely warranted. Have you read the report yet, Chief Executive? The Consul General's tired tone floated across the table and through the haze. Ibuka Masaru nodded, taking a moment to sweep some of the hair back into place. Well, we're in agreement. You are in Tokyo. How often does that happen? A muted smile creased to Takashima's face. Not often enough, yes. The IJA will be available to contribute intelligence to your government when requested. Tokyo asked myself to deliver the good news and wish to mention that they hope such cooperation can continue. Ah, and the Chief Executive considered whether he wanted to risk continuing unrestrained thought. Where's Gino Nagano? I would have thought he would be present at a meeting of this nature. He's out on drills, I'm afraid. Uh, scheduling conflict. Very unfortunate. Not another smile from the Consul General. This time, more relief than anything. Trust me, Chief Executive, it's better this way. No, believe me, I concur. And light discussion. And that concludes our agenda, Chief Executive. Consul General Takashima snapped his binder shut. Taking a drag from a cigarette, a productive meeting, all things considered. I'm sure you have other things to attend to, so I'll let you go early today. Oh no, I have time! Sure, we can talk about other things in business. A polite smile slipped across Ibuka Masaru's face as he reclined in his chair. Sunlight is beaming into his eyes. Tell me, Consul General, how are you finding Guangdong? Hope it's suitable for your interests. Oh, yes, it's an <coughs> interesting city. Surely, very active. There's a bit of reluctance in that answer, but Ibuko Masaru thought, so he pressed a bit further. Active? Is it as active as, say, Tokyo or Nanjing? Well, there's really much to like about it, but the food is quite good, and the weather's relatively good, but... But... I can't say I don't miss some. I suppose anyone would, and I wish... Do wish that I had the good fortune of some of my colleagues. A senior position in the foreign ministry or a good ambassadorship would have been quite nice, yes? Ibuko Masaru... I let the man reminisce further, but he'd heard what he needed to. Of course, the Japanese viewed Guangdong as a second-rate post, something that was beneath their talents. One day that changed, and they'd give this position the respect that it deserved. Today, though, he'd have to grin and bear it. So this respect is never easy to take. We'll gain one more favor of the Japanese consulate. Should they become frustrated with us? For any imaginable reason. So for this one, I don't mind. Increasing Zujin and Chinese support. Um, for 7 half or even less, I'll do that one. Just because I think that's worth it. Oh crap. There we go. Barely an easy fix. Oh boy. We still have to be down here. So 51% is not great. 26% is a little bit better, but not a huge amount, but you know, whatever. Uh, where are we at? There you are. Unlimited input. Hey, investments in audio and visual technology. Yes, please. So, we'll decrease chance support, of course. But increased Japanese expat support, but what else is new? You know? Not bad overall. Three days left. You get three more schools. What do you want to be when you grow up? I keep asking myself the same thing. <coughs> he was growing increasingly comfortable around his Japanese co workers, but their children terrified him. They weren't something one would be expected to be scared of, or even to be in a position to be so, but then. Fujitsu's new educational initiatives happened. The higher ups felt that that inspiration would help the children of the future push themselves harder, and whose story was more inspiring than that of a certain young Chinese audio uh, dictat. Li Hei, the spoonful of sugar that helped the medicine go down. And if you're wondering about uh, uh, economic review, please go ahead, get back to work. Nice. But how to inspire? He'd been hired on the basis of his engineering know how, not his public speaking abilities. He'd been given a basic guideline of the things to say and the general idea of what he should do. The words excellence and potential appearing very often have been quickly become a script. He tried to make it his own, somewhat, but every aspect of, or second of preparation he spent giving, gave him a visceral feel of all of his inadequacies in Japanese, his accent, his fumbling over grammatical concepts, confusion over the subject and topic particles, all deeply visibly painful to him. So most, he had to stuck to rote memorization. Nothing that he wanted to develop a habit of as an engineer, but he would have to do as an orator. But he stood before the kindergartners in their pristine classroom space, and began reciting his practice speech. However, he had barely gone through his own name before a little girl blurted out, You sound funny, where are you from? <laughs> this made Hay stop for a second. Had these children never heard of a Chinese name before? Had they never come into close contact with anyone who wasn't Japanese or using a Japanese name? He was already a bit lost with what he was supposed to be saying, let alone with explaining the intricacies of race relations in Guangdong. He would sit on a simple answer, somewhere east of Koshu. So we have 97%, so we can spend up to 2.5%. I don't mind more liquid reserves, but it doesn't do much for us. That political power, well, we can definitely use it to even greater effect later on. Hey, look at that. Nice. Nice. Oh, we're getting closer, man. We're getting closer. 
unlimited input and diversity in learning, better yet. The immense malleability of a child's brain before it falls into rust makes it the all too perfect vessel for a whole rotunda of talents. Creative arts, oratory skills, physical education, all indispensable ingredients for the perfect Guangdong man. As flexible as he is durable, ready to serve Guangdong on command and provide whatever is required of him. It is to this end that our experimental school shall be geared towards through the implementation of rigorous, mandatory extracurricular programs as criteria for the academic evaluations. Let the classroom henceforth rid themselves of monotonous methodology for all the all-round future as always better than a richified one. Tiny bit of corruption. Oh, uh, will this be done in 30 days? You know what? Within 30 days, that's fine. You can do it again. Product cycle, we have uh, less than three months. We're fine. Unlimited input. Ah, oh, bridge too far. Yoshiko's head was beginning to spin, which made her assume those of the children had already been flung into space. They were staring, staring at some kind of graph labeled as a Koenigsberg bridge problem. The teachers, the teachers, the teachers' voice was loud, clear, and common, punctuated by the tapping of the yardstick against the blackboard. The phrase "edge and verti, vertice." Appeared a good amount. The curriculum brochure she had skimmed through described exercises such as these innovative programs designed to teach children mathematical skills directly linked to fields such as computing, engineering, and data science more efficiently. The children themselves carried a range of facial expressions. Some echoed Yoshiko's own confusion, some had her turned white with terror, and yet some appeared attentive and curious. Some were nodding along. If there was one thing she could say for the lesson, it was that none of the students looked bored. Well, would that inspire them to go beyond what they would do ordinarily, however? There was little doubt in Yoshiko's mind that this was a system built upon attrition and reserved for the upper crust of society, not unlike the imperial examination system of old China. Yet, it had produced a legion of able scholars and administrators who may have been condemned to ignorance or obscurity in the mere or more partial, martial traditions of Europe and Japan. How many people had the potential of that of the Chinese boy Yoshiko had read about in the papers, but could never find their talents in a system built to accommodate an average result? Would be worth the cruelty. Cutting edge. Institutions. Even more Japanese approval. That's not bad. That's actually really good. So, what is it to be the classroom if not the Eden of knowledge, of academic enlightenment and inheritance? What is it to be the classroom if not the fulcrum upon which our nation would stand, wild and tall and embraced, with pride in its heart that vault of heaven glimmering with splendor from above? Oh crap, we're going to Brother Chandra, please go ahead. Oh crap, I hate this one so much. There's no other answer, Ibuka knows, and so do we. And the ultimate truth that we have has been encrusted within the institutions we have pursued to be perfected with such peerless wisdom and dedication. <coughs> all of the pinnacles of pedagogy and human intellect, all the Guangdong's kindergartens, elementary schools, high schools, and universities shall follow in our footsteps, and we shall mandate them so. In no time, the neurons beneath our soul shall spring back to life, teeming with the signals of modernity. The brains of Guangdong will return to our hands, and ours alone. You can still burn a little bit more, but I want to wait for that one. It's only 3.7, so it's not terrible. It's not great. But it could be worse. Hey, Massman's Dad Search, nice. I think here it's worth doing. Increases Kenpai Tai control, decreases Yakuza and Triad control. Nice. Well, the camp out is not looking very good at all, so that actually won't, oh, would not be bad. Decreases Japanese approval, increases police control. Decrease, so this is decreases camp by tie control in the state, increases police control by 2%. Oh, we've got approval to spare. Oh, not bad. We might actually go back and do that one later on. So we do have quite a bit of political power. Oh my god, are you kidding me? We just got rid of some more influence from them. Bruh. Bruh. Why do you pain me so... You can take one step forward and then two steps back. The Yakas are dominant, which is hurting us. <sighs> Mother agrees. At first, when <clears throat> oh, I was somewhat appreh appreh apprehensive. Uh, apprehensive. Apprehensive. But I think the results speak for themselves. My son used to hate school, but now he's, that's all he talks about, Miss says Miss Onodera, age 34. I've been seeing all these young Chinese geniuses in the news lately, and it made me worry th about that the Japanese youth are slacking off in the pursuit of the Pan Asian future. Thanks to the chief executive and Fujitsu's new program, we'll pull ahead in no time flat, Miss Sugahara, age 42. I'll admit, I'm a complete dunce when it comes to mathematics, so so much so, when I first started hearing my 10 year old talk about Leib Leibniz, I thought it was going to be fed German propaganda. Now, most kids are practically human calculators, says Miss Kondo, age 39. This testimony has all agreed that the Fujitsu method is a surefire, effective way to raise your child to become an adaptive, skilled member of the modern technological workforce. Our state will be the technological center of the world, and our youth will she shall be its envy. Stand up today. That's wrong the job. So it begins the rebirth of the Guangdong mine. From the assembly line of the lab bench, even the most 
Uninformed over men shall be accompanied by the finest of learning supplements and the wives of instructors. Or men keep the hands occupied. Their minds would already be ascending slowly but surely up the gleaming stairways of academia. This is all com complemented by Fujitsu education institutes. They shall forge themselves into as much learned labors as practical thinkers. Beacons of diligence and wisdom to inspire the rest of Guangdong's labor force and the perfect flag bears for our future. This is disgusting. <laughs> Off the clock. So begins the rekindling of the Guangdong spirit. Ibuka himself has purged the very concept of recreation from his dictionary. Needless to say, as lieutenants of Fujitsu, Guangdong's very nexus of innovation are expected to fall suit. No longer will redundant inane or nine inane uh, spare time will be allowed to clog up our schedule and leave our minds that ultimately rot or untimely rot between shifts, meals, and bed hours. Only the, only the most refined of academic workshops and laboratories will remain, chiseling the thirst for knowledge back into the rustling brains of our workers, blow by blow. Because we are blowing hard here. Only 97%, which is not bad. Decreases decision support in like four states, which is really not good at all. Oh my god, but happy May, everybody. Happy May. Shamian. Oh, one of the last refuges of organized religion in Guangdong was a Shamian Christian church, a locus of a large part of the Protestant community in the area. Out of curiosity. A book of moss who donated a black overcoat, a hat that shadowed his face, and a face mask. People recoiled from him as if he was sick, which made him recognizing him all the more difficult. He doubted even his wife and daughter would recognize him unless he took off the hat, the hat or mask. Stopping outside the gate. Here are the churchgoers from all the walks of life, many ethnicities, not merely Cantonese or Japanese, all income levels, grumbling about his rule. They spoke of pointless oppression and the crazy cruelty as so many others like that Bleeding Heart Marita were over prone to doing. Do the uh, other observers. These complaints made sense, but Ibuka, of course, shook them off like water off a duck's back. Silently observing the going ons and participating in a meeting from outside the gate, he walked away, the mental calculations were underway in his head. No need giving subsidy subversives another meeting place. Better at a church than in a bar where they can get a hold of weapons. Huh. Yeah, we'll see. No. We'll see. I keep I'm sorry, I keep coming back to this. I just hate it. 25% only. We're at 53%, which is a little better, but we're going to lose support no matter what. Like, now. Um, anything else here? We got about 17 days left for the next product cycle. Nothing too important there, no. Uh, let me do that again. God, we're at 45%. On the job, sink or swim. In the Vichy 2 labs, no two days were alike. New machines, new co-workers, new processes, new concepts. For hey, every day was a red letter day. He let himself be pushed to the limit again and again only to break through, looking at what had once been his own bleeding edge with scorn and pity. His renewed workplace was a foundry of the possible for himself and for human progress. Others were... Not as enthusiastic about the brisk pace at R&D, others, despite having many pedigree in Japan's finest universities, spent half their time asking for a clarification from the supervisors and staring at manuals in silent horror. horror. His fellow intern, Kaichi, currently looked as if he was going to cry after he heard the supervisor grow gradually more irritated. He stopped asking questions, though he was clearly getting nowhere on his own. For a minute, Hay thought about helping out, but decided against it. Chances were, the stuck-up dude would take it as an insult. It would be better for Hay to focus on his own tasks. The next day, Hay strode into work to find no more Kaichi, with a few good others also missing. The selection pool of interns had narrowed further, clearer than Hay thought he had made the right decision. By not helping the wise estate on Malibu, his ability could, not, could be measured more objectively, and he had been rewarded for it. The cream rises to the top. Ah, thank God. As we're barely ahead here. We're barely ahead here. Mike, we're barely ahead here. I hate the Yakuza. Now we're even more dominant, which is good. Uh, but we're going to really solidify our advantages here. Honestly, I don't mind increasing the Kenpai Tai influence a little bit to delete their other influence. Lower if you can. These guys, uh... Yeah, that's, that's not great, too, but, you know, it's better than nothing, I guess. But now we're out of political power, I think. <laughs> so we'll do cutting-edge institutions, which is pretty good. The most irritating man in the world. The only positive that came with uh, uh, Sun Gun Guang. Oh, I think I read this before. If you want to do this, please go ahead. Well, of course it is. What's well, good for Japan? I think I read this before, so, but... Oh, that was pretty dangerous. Cigarette, Takashima offered one across the table. Sunlight reflecting off his glasses. Uh, actually, no, I've heard this one before. Yeah, definitely, if you want to do this, please go ahead. tell him to take the courtesy of adding an extra zero to the check they'll send. Increase Japan's approval. Increase profitability of the next one by a little bit. Courtesy of telling them where my shoe will go if they ask for this again. Yeah, no, I'm going to do this one. We don't need 4% more. Actually, 4% would... Yeah, I've heard before. You never know what you're going to get. So that's why you do it several times, just in case. Nice. 
Prime the potent channel. Four days left. Here we go. Fair enough. Uh, uh, if you're going to buy this one, fair enough. Please go ahead. With a valuable clue about Song Ziguang's character. Maybe we'll find some more later. Nice. <coughs> Suppose we want to do a focus research, but we're going to wait. Go and spend it. Burn it. Burn it. There you go. You know what? I'd rather do this one first than this one because it's easy to get quality than anything else. Ah, uh, target markets. Where are we going to go? Iberia? No. Argentina, Germany? That's very, very profitable. Of course, I want to sell it to America too, but. Japanese. You know what? I might do China again. What's the profit profitability right now? 127%. It's not really that great. Let's get some more transport for this one. Hey, look, no political power. Not good. Not good at all. 8% growth, not less than 9% growth. Not good either. Oh boy. Oh boy. But where are we at now? Oh, look at this. Get freebies to the Chinese. 15 and 35%. Not fantastic. Uh, 40 and 35%, which is better. No, never do this one. What is a Zuzhin anyway? Zuzhin. There was a word that Hay heard frequently. It seemed to even mean something different every time he heard it said. Something. Uh, sometimes it was people of both Chinese and Japanese ancestry, though there was far too few of them to compose a whole ethnic or class group the way they appeared to. Sometimes the Chinese middle class thought it wasn't a word used much for the richer farmers held back in Hay's village. Other uses seem to be more cultural, or occasionally as a pejorative towards Japanese people in the danger of going native. It resolved this quandary, it turned to the man who knew, he knew as Lao Shen, but whom his Japanese co-workers called Kiyoma Shintaro. Honestly, I'm not sure if it means anything specific, Lao said. Officially, it's something you take on a census name instead of Chinese. It can be speaking Japanese, the clothes you wear, the job you have, or even what you call yourself. It's an aspirational thing, I guess. A sign of you made it or gotten as close as you can around these parts. It's pan Asianism in action, I suppose. So I'm Zuzhen then, S.K.? I can sort of speak Japanese, I work here, and I'm making pretty good money for my age. That's an interesting question. You're in the kind of place as a Zujin, yes, but you came to do it a different way than most. For most of us, it comes from being around the Japanese a long time, doing the sort of things they do. You, on the other hand, got handpicked from the gutter, no offense. Based on the skills you had, so maybe you're more like a Chinese person who made it. Not something you see much these days. In the end, it's really up to you, though. Something to think about. Something to absolutely think about. Hey, there you go. Oh, that one's back, too. Not bad. Yeah. So where are we at now? We are currently at 6% and 45%. Not great, but whatever. Yeah, I just gotta raise up Chinese support because it 45% is it, kinda it's kinda kinda garbage. Kinda trash. There you go. Well, only 2.37 political power day is not pretty good, but whatever. I'll get to the masses. Yes, the Chinese are the ones that swarm the most rock bottom of our factories, and yes, it certainly is tempting to simply leave them to their own devices, but to dismiss them as mere imbeciles swamped in perpetual destitution is to blatantly overlook the sheer manpower of 70% of Guangdong's ag aggregate population and the untapped gold mine of intellectual potential that comes with them. A machine without its innumerable cogs cannot function, deadly so, for a nation is striving to get back on its feet. Let the pristine halls of our universities open its embrace of the intellectually deprived Chinese masses, not merely as oases of bait knowledge, but as blazing, howling and blast furnaces of devotion and self better these people will throw themselves into for the greater good of Guangdong and those who take it. More Chinese and Zhuzhen sport? Nice. Oh, well, in some places. And not enough places, actually. Crap. Um, here, this is that one anyways, because I can. Where are we at? 6% and 6%, not bad. Oh, this one again, too. A grand epitaph. The image of the future of Guangdong. That was what was promised, but Yoshiko was here to look upon. Ibuka Masaru, Yoshiko, look upon him with black hair, neatly combed back, a perpetual neutral expression upon his face and eyes that seemed to flicker between a light visage and a death stare. He looked sure of himself, the epitome of business-like confidence. Ibuka's eyes glinted, and without further ado, he cleared his throat and began, Friends, colleagues, countrymen, I have invited you here, and you shall have come. I promise you a glimpse of the future, and you shall get it. A small hand gestures began accompanying his oration, but what does this mean? He paused and continued. When we were children, we were offered opportunities that very, that very few were. We took them with both hands, yet we were cut from so much of our potential. Very few of us mattered at all, or mastered at all. We were limited because the prime of our learning was torn away from us. I say no longer. I offer you generation-free restrictions, free to learn about all things and to be free, and the children of this land already benefit. Observe. 
It broke us to the side, and from the side of the stage came a gaggle of children. Yoshiko was amused until, before her eyes, math that she had been unable to do until she was 16 was solved by a 7-year-old. Before she gave him processes, the child had been exploded and led off stage, followed by the start of a violent performance. Skulls that took years to learn were being displayed by the children not old enough to be in the primary education, and it seemed that the audience were split between wounded pride and amazement. Yoshiko looked upon her own prestigious education. <coughs> She looked at all she had accomplished, and while she was still being on these children, she could not help but envy them. They had their whole lives ahead of them, and they were offered much, so much, yet she remained chained. Alas, I suppose Mr. Ibuka kept his promises, and the Guangdong Education Ordinance. 61 seats for this. It's time for us to put the icing on the cake of our recent endeavors. The future of the Guangdong Education Ordinance presents as one of the balanced promises. We're all existing curricula within our borders are up to date and up to standard. We're all aspiring minds with sufficient education qualifications to make cross threshold and access uh, prestigious careers no longer. Uh, well, diplomas merely be tokens of vanity, framed or pinned on collars, from now on to be the basis of merit, a gauge of character, and an indicator of each and every system's place within our uncompromising march of progress. Hurry right, up for this one. Uh, almost 100%, so look at that. Nice. Absolutely beautiful. Nice. How many days left do we have? 42? It's not bad. 10% definitely. Hey, he would say he had great patience. A man of his caliber had to, after all, the workers around him and his job were such hindrances at times, yet he could not deny it. Sitting through the school assembly, hearing similar, albeit slightly improved, rhetoric that he heard for years on end during his own education, he was bored. He and hated this. He had hated being idle, though he could feel his capability for creativity slowly bleeding away through his pores as he sat in his metal chair. At least he had this capacity not to display it, he thought to himself. He perked up as he heard himself being introduced by the headmaster of the establishment. He gave the usual short bow, plastered a small smile on his face, and went to the podium. Greetings, students of Bayou and First Primary. My name is Hay and I. He sang in his own mind once again, allowing himself to rattle off the speech he prepared far in advance to the point he, quite literally, could read off with enthusiasm in his sleep. Instead of paying attention to his own speech, he looked upon the crowd, the atmosphere was tense. Many were staring at each other with thinly veiled envy and contempt, or looking at each other like they were stepping stones. He recognized that look, he knew it, for he would not be here, or representative of Fujitsu. Without fear, he felt of those who were once his betters. Once you might have been restricted because your peers could not keep up with your own talents. Once you would have been chained to, an, to adequacy. He waved his hands in a dismissive motion, good riddance of that. You, nor your teachers, deserve anything less than your best. No chains, no excuses. Absolutely. Hire more skilled engineers, huh? Back to school. In all honesty, away, I was not expecting much from our new school. Uh, ugly gray brick didn't seem you know, much to promise much, or no matter her previous education experiences. She could read better than most Chinese her age, thanks to extensive homeschooling and a few years with the village, uh, village's aging schoolmaster. <coughs> I don't think we to go to our school. I felt like something in an endless loop of the previous years, designed primarily to teach her less fortunate countrymen. Just about enough to work and die in a factory, and as for country women, well, they weren't expecting to know much anyways. The new school and the curriculum, however, it was, of course, different. For the first time in a long time, she felt challenged, encouraged even. As an apple supply of new books and equipment instead of the rotting half-forgotten leftovers she'd been accustomed to, something she had never before considered became available to her. <clears throat> she was even surprised to find a wing of the school dedicated to those with developmental dis disabilities. <coughs> A group which had typically simply been hidden away by shame families. Perhaps life in the city would not prove as intolerable as it had before. Still, though, what her father, according to her father, had said, life in the country was becoming harder and harder each day, and as more and more money and people were forced out away into the cities. New schools seemed to aspire to instill more ambition to the populace, but for what? To become a slightly more skilled factory worker? Another brick in the wall? <clears throat> yeah, we're going to go with this one. Sure, why not? Getting more interest is always difficult. Um, we'll go with 10 more. There's a 1 for 25 again. So where are we at for now? 85 and 80%, which is not bad. And now we're at what? 85 and 90%. To those who take him, the recesses of the mind, hey, found, were in a good place to go into in order to cast a shadow over the combination of earth breaking excitement and nervousness that had cascaded over himself. He had the right to be excited, of course. Um, he was being offered something that barely anyone else in this new age had a chance. Uh, he was being given the offer for a funded college education, granted, only one semester, but that wasn't nearly enough to turn the tides of emotion that corrected up the usually ever frozen facial expression he wore into a, a small smile. Nonetheless, he had enough time to prepare, leaving his own mind to observe his surroundings. He found himself in the presence of his family in the living space. The commercial said just come out on the radio. Good. Now or never, I hate thought to himself. Taking a deep breath, he gave a small enough catch, cough to catch the attention of those present. Joe would have to get the news later. He couldn't wait any longer. 
I wanted to let you know some good news I received this morning. His voice didn't waver, even as those present all turned to him, Leong as expected, but kept a stern gaze locked upon him, but hey, brush it off and continue. I received an offer from Fujitsu. They're paying for my college education. Despite the pride that wrote out the statement, the room was silent for a few moments, and Hayes' nervousness almost took a hold of him. What did take him off guard, however, was the lessening of the piercing glare from his father. Good, well done. Leong stood up, but I swear, if you come back over there with your head filled with Japanese crap, Dad, why well, cry, cutting him off? Don't be so hostile. You don't even know what, he, what it's like yet. She turned to Hayes, smiling. So, well, how, how is it? Hayes smiled, well, it should be suitable. So, right now, what does this do? Standardized curriculum within schools of all levels, mandates educational prerequisites in certain human resources markets. More money, of course, and it costs more money. Academic base, research facilities begins to improve, increase social costs by even more. So we'll see what else we can do with this. The right brainer. When all is said and done, however, all the books and cutting edge institutions, all the external knowledge in the world will remain just that. External, if we can't root out the crux of our woes ourselves. It hurts because it's true. We understand that humanity has always had an inherent propensity for comfort. We understand it's all too easy for the average person to toss away his aspirations, have a good long yawn, and then sink back into the warm embrace of soft satisfaction the first chance he gets. I'm just not good enough. I don't see any way out of this. I didn't choose to be born in this rags. Such are the go-to excuses that he would gladly cower behind, and we understand. What we don't understand is why some of us would rather spend little hours wallowing in a corner than use those same hours into picking up a book or a manual. Why some of us would rather wait for things to change for the better than step up and be the change they want to see in this world. It is proaction, the constant upward drive that human brilliance is made of, not sloth, not reaction, certainly not opportunities bottled up in the jars labeled Japanese or Chinese, sitting on a shelf waiting for your most sacred hand to choose. Because the perfect, perfect man doesn't choose, he takes. To truly be the masters of the future, we must reshape the present, and we must make no compromises, no half measures to coddle, and, to coddle the unready. Hey, more Zushin. Nice, not bad. Increase current product quality market. What are you in the dark? How many days left do we have? 19. Where are we at? 85, 90%. We'll see in just a little bit if we get another one open here. We should. Because I don't want to increase the days by like 5. Um, Reformation of the UK. Well, that's nice. Uh, refresh, freshman. It was Hayes' first day at college, and he was already in love. The libraries, the labs, the sheer skill of all took his breath away. It was like being at a feast, unable to choose which delicacies to sample first. Hayes longed to lose himself in the libraries and study engineering treaties, but uh, he also wished his classes were longer that he could simply speak one-on-one -on -one with his professors. This time, time, there simply wasn't enough time. Last ten days. Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. Quality, though. Quality's really good, though. Ooh, yeah, we have to do that one. Uh, the most surprising thing about the whole experience was the number of fellow Chinese high bumped into. There were more of them here than he thought we would have expected, and they were all dazzled as he was. On the whole, we would have said the experience exceeded his expectations except in one regard. He anticipated some prejudice on the part of the Japanese students, and they hadn't disappointed him. Twice while walking down his halls, a passing group of Japanese knocked the books out of Hayes' arms and chuckled as he stooped to pick them up. All around him, he saw some of hazing administered to his fellow Chinese. It infuriated him, but he didn't want to interfere. He was here for knowledge, not trouble. But trouble is a way of finding you. A pit. Chief Executive, uh, Ibuka Masaru. Watch as the instructors taught exactly how Fujitsu had instructed them to do so. He was pleased with what he saw. The classrooms were orderly and efficient. <clears throat> he had a front row seat to the molding of the great minds of tomorrow, a privilege that the chief executive was proud to enjoy. <coughs> Suddenly, commotion. Uh, yeah, we'll do that one. Uh, at the front gate of the school, Shoki Buka from his thoughts. He stood at the edge of the courtyard to safely observe the situation without being noticed. <clears throat> An elderly Chinese man stood there with his grandson arguing about Fujitsu's security. Apparently he had no idea that this particular school was for the families of individuals associated with Fujitsu only. The old man was shouting about how his rural area had no quality schools and be begging him to go to admission to discuss the slight possibility that his grandson could attend. He bookas. Thoughts were then brought to the education ordinance. It might be difficult to add an amendment to allocate additional funding to rural schools. Casting a wider net increased the chances of finding the next visionary such as himself. Yet Ibuka also realized that such funding could prove to be nothing more than wasteful. Finally, Ibuka con contemplated, letting the elderly man know about his opportunity. I have better things to attend to. I believe I may be able to help you, maybe just a little bit. And which we will finally get up to uh, 61 votes. Yeah, we didn't lose very much at all, but this will do what? Improve academic, ac the academic base even further, increase education, increase chance support too. Not bad. In Atlas. Ibuka Masaru. Snuck into the local commencement ceremony, honoring the students who graduated high school. For the graduates and their families, today was a day of immense celebration, yet it was also a day of immense opportunity. For both the graduates and the corporations that would soon hire them. He noticed that there were far more Fujitsu representatives than any other corporation. Ibuka allowed himself to feel proud of this fact that Fujitsu, more than any other corporation, valued and respected proper education, yet Fujitsu wasn't the only corporation with recruiters in attendance. The chief executive noted individuals from other corporations such as Matsushita and even Sony. Seeing the Sony representatives in particular cause an uncomfortable cocktail of emotions to swell up within Ibuka. Can you really entrust the futures of these promising students to Morita and his company? Well, Ibuka wished to respect the choices of the young graduates. 
He also feared what would happen if they veered down the wrong path. Was it really worth preserving a choice? Such a choice. If he knew that he and the Fujitsu were the right option for all his graduates? Fujitsu deserves every choice in the world, after all. Mm -hmm. Sets up centers to allow school institutions to have a degree of autonomy. Uh, well, I mean, that would mean they could be more competitive, and we want to be more competitive, right? Where are we at now? 65, so because we did that. Um, <clears throat> with rural subsidies. Oh, increased regional autonomy. autonomy. We're actually going to lose two seats, or they'll get two more. How about the Falcom 23060? Fuji 2 Limited has introduced the latest innovation in computer technology with the latest in their Falcom uh, line of computers, the Falcom 23060. By utilizing a full suite of integrated circuits across multiple processors, the 23060 promises to improve processing speed over currently available models by a factor of 4 to 10. Even more impressive. It manages to do what we kept while keeping the overall size almost unchanged, meaning that companies that chose this upgrade will get the greeting processing power without having to sacrifice any additional storage space. The introduction of integrated circuit promises uh, to revolutionize computing, and Fujitsu will be on the front lines. It seems Gordon Moore is right. Average up 96.25% quarter. So we lost two seats, but we get three more in the end. And it reduces China's opinion by over 7%. That's pretty decent, I'd say. Um, we can leave that one button open for now. Corruption is still a little higher. But now it'll be above 50%, which is pretty good. The house always wins and increases Chinese support. Not bad. Uh, Chief Executive Yi Bukha Master was in the middle of a routine inspection of this company's headquarters. His mind began to wander back to the education ordinance. He was beginning to worry that even if the education ordinance were to pass today, that the legislation would not benefit all the young minds of Guangdong. Regardless of what he does, the Chinese population will still only be disadvantaged in comparison to the Japanese and even the Zhujin populations, at least for the near future. For a moment, Yi Bukha was entrapped in the clutches of an unfamiliar emotion. Helplessness would standardization really further the cause of education in Guangdong. That was when Yi Bukha's eyes fell on Li He, ever the rising star Li He, uh, shining only brought in classrooms and workshops like even as time flied by. Standardization would allow more like him to be noticed. The brilliant visionary <clears throat> would shine through despite their background. Standardized education or evaluation therefore might not fix the root problems of that Chinese face, but what definitely would do is rinse the dirt off the pearls. Reasonably, one could say it was enough. It is fun way. Yet, if there are only more like you, national testing. Mandates national standardized university entrance exams. This is going to be a very comprehensive one. And this one does what? Decreases Chinese institution support and worse an academic base. Know your place. Two weeks into his semester, Hay was already making waves. He'd gotten perfect marks from his first two engineering papers and impressed his professors with his original innovative thinking. People were starting to notice him, and he couldn't have been happier. But a sight in college, and the courtyard, college courtyard quickly wiped the smile off his face. A group of Chinese students, Japanese students, I mean, Japanese, dressed in extraordinarily expensive suits, circled a pair of Chinese and shouted at them in Japanese. Even at a distance, Hay could tell the Chinese were at a loss. They had only a basic grasp of Japanese, and their use of the language extended only to pleas for abuses for the abuses to stop. Hey, you knew we shouldn't get involved, but the sign made his blood burn. Who did these elitists think they were? Hey sent them over to the confrontation, pushed right in the center of the circle, and addressed the bullies in their own language. Enough, Hey said, you don't get to decide who belongs here and who doesn't. We've all earned our right to be here, I can't say the same of you. <clears throat> That's not the Japanese. Many of them shared classes with Hey and were already falling behind his marks. Their leader, a towering man, jabbed a finger at Hey. Know your place, he growled. He waved a hand over all three Chinese students. Know your place, and with that, he called off the assault and led his fellows away. <clears throat> Hey's face burned. They thought they were better by right of birth, but they didn't exemplify Ibuka's teachings. Hey would show them he'd work thrice as hard as any Japanese and prove himself superior. The clock to all three o'clock, time for optics and thermodynamics. Feed the fire and the house always wins. It had started so well. Nanjing, Beijing, Shanghai have been interlinked and computerized almost as straightforwardly as it would have been in the home islands. Ningbo and Fuzhou had presented some difficulties, but they could be covered with an enhanced budget granite after the port of Shanghai almost doubled its daily loading capacity in a matter of months. But Chengdu and Chongqing had dashed those hopes to pieces. Apparently, those darn barbarian warlords refused to understand that they had, all they had to do was cooperate with the center. <coughs> and it would help them reap in more in taxes, of course. Even if they cooperated, the question remained of how to even maintain the accounts. Some parts of the country still used bookkeeping systems from the Qing era, while others simply adopted the Japanese method wholesale in the Yunnan. The question devolved even further into who was even in charge of the cities and towns. Tiao Yan and Xi Yan said one thing, Kun Ming said another, and meanwhile, someone had already stolen the cables, wires, and computers. He book a master who press his eyes shut, and once again reduced the problem to numbers, limits, and constraints. Focusing on inner China obsessively would be a total loss, but some advantages had been reaped at considerable expense. Fujitsu had essentially become a key component of the government's administration, something that he would certainly help in the negotiations back at the Three Pearls, and one could always interpret this as an investment that could lead to more in the future investment. Is that all China will ever be, an investment? Perhaps. Ah. And it passes, the right? Brainer. So if you're gonna do this again, please go ahead, but so get more Zujin support. Well, I guess we'll go through too, but we'll see. 
It passes. A pitch verbal battle sprung up inside the legislative council as Al as a Sony faced down the Fujitsu aligned opponents. Morita led the charge with several darting accusations going so far as to describe the measures within the bill as proof of Fujitsu's continued detachment with basic morality. Was a remark which was met with equal measure of the praise and jeers from the council's representatives. It becomes self allowed a sneer in response, but nothing more, preferring to leave his supporters to fire back with their own charges at Morita. However, the structures, uh, structure formations of the debate soon dissolved into a free-for-all amongst the associates who were not aligned with the Fujitsu as a scramble to determine the validity of each article. As no clear opposition was forthcoming, the vote unsurprisingly came out in Fujitsu's favor. And with the bill's passage, the new standardized curriculum would soon become yet another venture operated under Ibuka's relentless vision. Another success. So, real subsidies, of course, which is nice, increases Chinese support, but it ultimately decreases Chinese support overall, which kind of sucks, but... Increases Chinese support even more. Oh boy. But poverty could be, become better. But we lower Chinese support, which is not good. Lower Chinese support. We're always lowering Chinese support. Ultra modern architecture. We can replace the buildings we just demolished without inspired hunks of steel and cement. That'd simply be cutting out a diseased organ and replacing it with a tumor. A better society must be built from the ground up, and that includes the very streets they walk on. The best architects in Japan, even from outside Fujitsu if need be, shall we summon and enlisted. Seventy years ago, American architects conceived the city of the, uh, conceived of the beautiful city. City beautiful movie, and, and now it shall be a city realized. Nice. We can do this too. That'd be pretty good. Vote on that one first. Surreal sights. Increased market demand. Raise the light showing above the window blinds, illuminating the newly opened letter lying on the desk. In the center of the room, the Yamauchi and Yokoi were talking animatedly. Uh, a small retinue of technical staff were gathered around, giving advice where necessary. The letter recently received by Nintendo had been from the Fujitsu Limited, and celebrated the company's recent innovative streak. Unfortunately, there was still a caveat. Markets demanded constant expansion and innovation, demanded the creation of new desires for consumers to satiate. Nobody toys were a start, but they wouldn't be out of it, or wouldn't cut it. It was time for Nintendo to embrace the future of electronics. If it had only been a little while earlier, back when Fujitsu had first assumed power in Guangdong, Yamachi would have found this a daunting task, however. He had been rejuvenated by Fujitsu's recent drive for innovation. As soon as he read the letter, uh, he called Yokoi into his office to begin brainstorming. <clears throat> a new idea for the next generation of Nintendo products. It had been a long night with many unworkable concepts being rejected, but eventually something feasible fell into place. Yamachi and Yokoi set out on designing an opto-electric pistol, a light gun. They would totally be held by a player and used to shoot uh, targets, displayed by an overhead projector. As well as being a technological marvel, the game would feed into well into the militaristic zeitgeist. Should the game prove popular, then a collaboration with the Imperial Japanese Army would not be out of the question. As the night developed into the early hours of the morning, the meeting was adjourned and the team of advisors dismissed. It had been a resounding success. The next step in consumer entertainment had been conceptualized. Commercial power grows out of the barrel of a gun and surreal sights. <clears throat> Everywhere one goes, hastily prepared papers in Japan and in Japanese and Chinese are put up in employment centers. There is a common thread of these announcements. One must not must have a degree or higher. An education may even be considered to be higher. Not entirely unexpected. Chief Executive Ibuka had pushed through such measures, yet these restrictions were implemented almost overnight before, before anyone knew what had happened. Equality of opportunity was a phrase of the day as Fujitsu's men passed through the education ordinance, yet for the Chinese such things never materialized. Quickly parsing through characters printed on a paper taped into, onto a window, a worker shakes his head. Degree requirements, four years of higher education, all things he and most everyone he knew knows will never get. It's plain, plainly and painfully clear for everyone who has half a brain what they're trying to do. Jobs hiring, Chinese need not apply. For the Zujin, they are split down the middle. The requirements that ordinance imposed are divisive, both figuratively and quite literally. With Zujin, jobs being segregated by what degree and what major one gets. The population was suddenly beginning to be divided by education. Looking at a small restaurant, one can find a few businessmen talking among themselves, discussing the implications of the ordinance. One makes his case. Things will improve with this measure, as it forces them to compete and do self-improvement educationally. Other, thus privileged, frets over what will happen to him. He doesn't have the resources to afford a higher education outside his ma major. Nothing shakes his doubts what about what might, what might happen. For the Japanese, there is unbridled opportunity, and without much competition, things are easier. Guangdong is a pearl of an oyster. There is a student in the un un unemployment that the employment center, looking at the paper tagged tape on the window. He read through the requirements, something about needing specific degrees for sp sp specific jobs, something about needing certain majors for certain jobs. He nods and moves on, though, with a letter step. He'll have a job in the future, though. Good for him. Yoshikoi, Yoshiko and the Model Learner. The education ordinance, well, and its fate, set off a flurry of activity in the educational institutions of Koshu. Now, at least in the university where Li Hei, now increasingly known as the Model Learner, was embarked on a journey to unlock his potential, as the book, or rather repetitively put it. Yasukawa Yoshiko found herself as the most recent of the journalists sent to interview this model specimen, <clears throat> uh, as her editor, semi ironically, called him. She found Hei to be a well spoken, intelligent youth, but with one prone to going on small tangents here and there. The conversation twisted and turned past various subject matters before coming to the matter of Zujin and its meaning. 
Hay expresses deep interest in the subject, speaking about the complexities of the social class with which he was increasingly beginning to identify. The definition of Azusian is nebulous. Some call them traitors, others call them loyal assistants. They may be Chinese or they may be Japanese, but they could be even neither. At times, the concept seems more cultural than ancestral, as it a conscious, conscious choice. To accept and participate in a Guangdong society? Is it something else? This intrigues me. You should go not a gravely this interview. The fact that he, Li Hei was where he was because of a Fujitsu grant and Ibuku's personal acknowledgement was likely to be yet another Fujitsu PR win. Yet as Yoshiko headed home, Hei's comments stuck in her mind. Can the model student attain Zuzhen status solely by excellence and nurture? Was she herself a Japanese living in Guangdong and Zuzhen in her own right? But in a society where everyone was striving for excellence, surely the reward was a darn sight too narrowly defined. Property's only getting worse, and we're working on schooling, which is good. Cool. I don't have that many special forces, but whatever. I do that one anyways. Alright, so with this one, um, we could do this one. Do we don't really need 12% yet? How, how, how much is it going up by every month? 7.5% uh, is pretty good right now. It gives us more Zushin support, which we're just beelining towards completely. Um, Nami... Oh, uh, Koryu. My apologies for leaving you ahead, for leaving ahead of you. No, 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 thank you for your hard work. It was a dark evening in the coast, and the sun setting sun was clearly visible in the streets that were not smog ridden. Yosukawa Yoshiko walked out of the office of the Canton Fujian Koran with an envelope in her hand, which contained her massively increased pay for the month. Her article in Li Hei had been published some time back and had been one of the major contributors to her magazine's popularity. It of course said that article could manage balance and insightfulness, with lockstep conformance to a book as vision. She kept walking through the newspaper district in which she worked. Looking to her left and right, she saw several newspaper and magazine firms that had rejected her right after the Yusuda crisis going through the motions of closing down. One in particular just had the last day of work, and grim-faced her weeping employees were leaving with their boxes in hand. On the other hand, it seems everything's going my way, and I've got myself to thank for that, Yoshiko thought to herself more than with a little pride. She was about to congratulate herself more when she saw a familiar police officer, and the man she knew as Hayashi, directing pedestrians down the streets. He seemed rather absent-minded to uh, Yoshiko's by now experienced eye. Yoshiko had things to do in uh, uh, self to treat, so she didn't waste too much time with the policeman. With a brief thought of, I hope, do hope he's doing alright, and she kept walking home. That night, Yoshiko ate and drank twice the amount of she normally did, and felt very happy. Oh, she's, someone's feeling happy. Because right now, this one is, is dangerously close. Ah, uh, that's pretty close. Uh, very, very close. Oh my god. Way too close for comfort. And way too close for comfort. Not close enough. Oh my god. The wonders of college life. <clears throat> It was after dark. Moonlight streamed through the window. Uh, Why listening attentively to Hay's description of college life? The libraries, Hay said, are bigger than anything you can imagine. More books than you can, you can read in a hundred lifetimes. And lectures are given in rooms ten times the size of our house. And the work, you know, it's hard, but I've been spending a lot of time studying after hours. Hay passed a hand over the stack of books beside him, and for an instant, a fleeting instant, a sad look crossed his face. Why they knew him? What's wrong? She asked. He shook his head, nothing really, just got a bit sentimental about where I am, that's all. He careened his head upwards towards the ceiling, and a sigh bursted out of his mouth. Japanese kids hate me because, you know, fellow Chinese folks aren't exactly buddy-buddy with me either, and not every day spent being green-eyed at my papers, they spent booing at my oral Japanese. He shrugged. To each own, I guess, at least for me, that's less hours talking to blockheads and holier than thou's, and more time spent on learning, practicing, and actually being productive. Well, I put a hand on Hay's shoulder. It must be so hard not having anyone to talk to, but at the same time, you're doing amazing things. I, I guess I couldn't say how proud I am of you, Hey. Hey, hey, this hand on over sisters, you better be. He smiled, and here's the moral of the story. Textbooks, labs, every school and student under the sun has them. But if you want to find out what kind of person you, you want you want to be going for, make something out of yourself. Like what I'm doing, guess you'll have to guess who you'll have to count on. He paused and stared into wise eyes and eyes. You. Come what may, you always have you. What you are in the dark. They had been a good day for Li Hei. Earlier that day, he sat down with an executive from Fujitsu and sold a company man on a new transistor he designed. When the meeting ended, the man made it very clear that Hei had endeared himself to Fujitsu. It was merely the most recent in a long line of successes for Hay. Or Hai. Probably Hay. It was so high off his triumph and lost in his own head that he didn't see the elderly Chinese man until he bumped into him. The man stumbled, turning around and locked eyes with Hay. Hay froze, waiting to see if the old man would lay, him, lay into him for his mistake. The old man's clothes were shabby, unwashed, and moth eaten. Hay was suddenly all too conscious of his own fine suit and polished shoes. He looked around. The street was filled with a great number of homeless and destitute people all staring at Hay. Some regarded the boy with sadness, some with spite, some with naked greed. Hay looked again at the old man. This could have been me one day, he thought with horror. It still could be. Growing anxious at the sight of such a grim mirror, he slipped past the old man and ran the west, west the rest of the way home. Joan was there, staring on the, standing on the threshold of the front door with his arms crossed. Is it worth to, so, to soar so high, Hay? He asked coldly. Hay didn't answer. He stepped aside, chun, and started inside the house. Is it? Well, one of the comments says, As Ibuka's Guangdong progresses into the future, the Chinese and Zushin are forming groups waiting for an opportunity to destroy Ibuka's vision. 
Also, he doesn't look that I favor the Zhuzhen instead of the Chinese, so my bad. One, two, three, get moving. Can't you see it? Uh, Chun shouted, pointing an accusatory finger at Hei across a dining room table. Mercifully, they were alone. The rest of the family was otherwise engaged. Ibukamasu never gave a darn about us. He never gave a darn about you. If he just took one step out of his fantasy land, he'd see for himself just how far he'd been tramping those of us wreathing and suffering down here into the effing mud. What the heck are you talking about? Hey, bristled his eyes wide open. Fujitsu has created more than enough opportunities for people to strive for the best of the best. Is it their fault they don't seize the chances Ibuk has given them in? Shaving tomorrow with you, variants 13. Uh, hey, stop dead. What? That part around one, uh, one minute in. I heard that crap on the TV so many times, my ears full of calluses already. Never thought I'd hear that exact effing words out of my own little brother's mouth, thought, though. Chun smirk. Do you even hear yourself? Do you hear how stupidly soulless you become? Hey, fell silent. There was really no point in arguing. Hey respected Chun, but Chun would never change his mind. Hey knew that. He knew what he wanted. He knew what it was It was only by his own innate skill that an ambition that he'd sought, he'd sought out Fujitsu. He was no mouthpiece. All that he had done, he'd done for his own volition. It had to be. It had to be. Still at 52%, which is good. Reducing corruption would be nice. Seven and a half, up to 9%. We do that one. Hey, investments in household electronics. Nice. Hey, that stain's finally gone. Goodbye, stain. Quadric cycle. Gotta love it. Where are we at right now? Almost 20%. Death is still pretty bad, though. Huh. The finest money can buy. <coughs> Ultra modern architecture. And then we'll talk about architectural innovations. Expand the impoverished. There are too many neighborhoods filled with decaying shanties, sunken sidewalks and crumbling apartments, large families crammed into tenements, drifters curling up in alleyways, peddlers and panhandlers clogging every street. Some look at this mess and see vibrance and authenticity. A book sees nothing but waste, the waste of perfectly good land. It'll have to go up, obviously. The hovels will be bulldozed, the streets will be leveled and properly drained, and the slate will be wiped clean for something better to come along. What about the residents? Uh, the soft-hearted simpletons will cry. What about them? They're free to go, as long as they don't come back to stink up the new and improved neighborhoods. Architectural innovations. Even though hey, so I had to stay on his toes just to keep up with the conversation. He'd make a level, middle-level designer with Fujitsu, and this had opened the doors to some architectural and city planning meetings. He was in one of those meetings right now, and seated around a map of the Three Pearls, discussing the minutia of bulldozing a high-density urban sector and replacing it with an overland transport hub. As Japanese had improved substantially, but he still found himself missing things in the meeting. At times, he was uncertain whether a man had used a common Japanese phrase or a technical term unique to the transport industry. He was so focused on the conversation that he didn't realize he had an intense look on his face. Oda, one of the experts in the rail transport, noticed the look, pointed to Hay and laughed. Look, the boy's face is so scrunched up, he looks like he's trying to pass Katie Stone. A small laugh circled the table. Hey, frown. At least I'm actually putting effort into my work, he replied. His Japanese in that sentence was perfect, and the other XX took notice. They're not approvingly at Hay's feistiness, but Hay was unsatisfied. He looked again at the map of the pearls. There have been, had to be a faster way to clear the sector for construction. Hay would find it. But what are the people living there? We don't talk about them. I, I want to do that one, but you know what? We don't have enough corruption still. I'd rather focus on this over here. Like, lowering all this other influence is important. Because right now we're almost at 100%, so I'm okay with lowering this. But uh, lowers Yakuza support. Okay, do this one too, 1.5. We'll let it build so we can load this one later on. Because right now it's just, not, it's just too high. But you know what? In the comments below, please let me know. Should we do our own intellectual base? Which I kind of want to do, which I think I want to do, or should we do a new life in Guangdong? I'll let you guys decide, but I'm personally pulling for our own intellectual base overall. But as soon as the future, uh, things are running so much more smoothly now that construction has been underway. Like a powerful motor finally fitted a suitable electricity source, our society can finally reach for its full potential now that its base has been improved. A beautiful city is, does create a beautiful society, but our architectural renewal is far from our final concern. What good is a city without the bright minds that inhabit it, prosper within it, and bring in the revenue to a city? But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Let's continue to see what else left for Hay, everyone else. And see if we can beat the crap out of the Yakuza. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.